There's been a real rush to entrepreneurship in the last five to ten years, and I think it, it's uh, every college, every university now has courses. They're trying to create ecosystems, and I don't think there is a, uh, a the right way yet. I think everybody's still uh, on new ground, finding a better way to do, go about it. Uh, but the, pay, the going back to what I said earlier, the the pace of uh, of of the uh, of life is becoming so rapid that uh, embracing entrepreneurship is ultimately a mindset that everyone is going to have to look at in terms of managing their own career. Uh, I really believe that the most important skill set we can develop right now is the ability to create and manage your own career. We're in a world where when you talk about young people, but uh, for almost anyone that's in the workforce, we've got declining job stability. Uh, we have a, a, a wealth uh, uh, being generated for the super rich but declining for the middle class to a significant degree. Uh, we're facing the possibility of declining upward mobility. Uh, all of this is happening uh, very quickly. So for the individual, uh, entrepreneurship is a good option. Uh, it's not easy to do it right out of school uh, because you, you lack experience and picking your opportunity is very critical. Uh, so I think getting out and getting some work experience with an idea of, of looking for opportunity is a better option, but if you can't get started, then perhaps you have to look for your opportunities uh, right out of school. I'm always inspired by other people's successful stories, and I know you're a co-founder of the old Hyde House, and I'm just curious as to how that idea came about. Were you and the other co-founder just sort of brainstorming ideas? Was there a passion for leather goods? Any, any kind of insights you can share, I'd appreciate it. Well, there are a lot of factors, but most opportunities come from problems. And that particular problem was that we had the building and we were moving into a much larger building. So we were brainstorming about what we, what we could do with the building itself. Uh, we also had a customer who had a, a smaller operation, but similar one up in Blythe, Ontario who we knew, he was an older gentleman, but I had a lot of conversations with him. So my brother-in-law and I, particularly when we're joking about it, we say, well, we were at a trade show in Montreal and on the plane back over the second Roman Coke, we decided to open the old Hyde House. But it was more complicated than that. We lived in a, uh, Acton, which was a leather town, and at the time it was more considered a tannery town, which was a negative image, but we thought we could turn that image around. And uh, most people like leather, very few people like tanneries. Uh, the real key to making it work uh, was at the time uh, Sunday, we didn't have Sunday opening across the province. And by approaching it on the basis of it being a tourism uh, uh, industry, uh, by promoting Acton as Leathertown, we were able to get Sunday opening. And although the advertising campaign for which the Hydos is well known for was an integral part, if we hadn't been able to get that Sunday opening to begin with, uh, it wouldn't have worked the way it did. So it's a matter of identifying the opportunity and then what do you have to do to make it work. And in, that, in our case, it was two things. It was getting that Sunday opening and then putting the advertising campaign and making it effective.